Okay, this is MAT 175, Lesson 29, Section 6.5, and we're going to be working with graphs, tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant trigonometric functions. And so with tangent, y equals to tangent x, tangent looks very similar to a uh, x cubed function, but with tangent, we get these asymptotes. Uh, intervals of pi over 2. And the reason for that is because in the unit circle we have here 0, here's pi over 2, and here's pi and 3 pi over 2, and then back to 2 pi. We know that our values for cosine and sine are 1, 0, cosine and sine, and then tangent is 0. And for uh, cosine is 0, sine is 1, and uh, tangent we know is undefined. And then at, uh, we have to get 1, 0 for cosine sine, tangent is 0 here at uh, pi, and then at 3 pi over 2, we're back to 0, negative 1 for cosine and sine, and tangent is undefined again. So you can see that tangent at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, or, or at 3 pi over 2, we could also say this is negative pi over 2 here we have the undefined, and that's where these asymptotes come in. And also notice that tangent has a period of only one pi. So the equation for the period for tangent x is going to be pi, instead of two pi, it's just one pi over omega. And uh, so, you know, tangent's different because of that one interval. And we're only going to, basically, we're only going to be looking at intervals from negative 2 pi, and then this would be 0 to positive pi over 2, negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2. And uh, so that's where we get our, uh, we don't, Sure, it goes on indefinitely from negative infinity to positive infinity, but it's interrupted. You get these undefined segments at multiples of pi over 2. And here you have pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on. Alright, and just like with sine and cosine, we have a tangent omega times x plus uh, b. Where b down, omega, that's going to cause your horizontal condensing and stretching, just like before, A is our amplitude, and you have that plus or minus, which can cause the um, graph to reflect, and plus or minus inside the parentheses could cause the graph to reflect about the y-axis. And we have A equals to cotangent. So if we were to take a look at a graph, for a parent function y equals to tangent x, we would have our asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, and we can come up to the right, go through the origin and down to the left, and zero zero. And that's basically all you know, we're interested in. We're only going to look at that one cycle. And again, tangent has that period of only one pi. So we could say that our, our domain would be negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. For, and this is only for one cycle. And our range, that's going to be all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. 
Now, if we're looking at this in terms of long term, where one tangent continues on, then that would also be negative to positive energy. But we're only interested in that one cycle. Now, for y equals to cotangent, x here, cotangent is undefined at uh, zero. Cotangent is undefined at zero and at one pi. And so it's going to, and it looks like cotangent looks similar to tangent, but for cotangent, it moves up and to the left and down and to the right. And it goes through at pi over 2. Well, why is that? Why is this happening? Well, at pi over 2, remember now, cosine is 0, sine is 1. Tangent is undefined because tangent is sine over cosine, which is 1 over 0. So cos cotangent is the reciprocal tangent, so that would be like cosine over sine. And that would make it 0 over 1 or 0 at pi over 2. And that's what we have here. And so at 0, we have cosine is 1, sine is 0, tangent. We can say that's sine over cosine, which is 0 over 1, which is 0. But for cotangent, that's going to be cosine over sine. And so that'll be uh, 1, co 1 for cosine, 0 for sine. And so that's where you get the undefined at 0, and also undefined at pi. Because this would be negative 1, 0, and so tangent 0, but for uh, cotangent, you're going to get that undefined at 0 and at 1 pi. Okay, and you also have your amplitudes of negative 1 to positive 1. Now, for cotangent and tangent, negative 1 and positive 1 are in increments of pi over 4 and and 3 pi over 4, but um, we're not going to get too involved with that, because that would be up here, up here, and across, but we're not going to be too concerned about where, what increments is tangent going to be at 1, or cotangent. We're, so we're only doing three uh, segments. Or tangent and cotangent. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, this graph. We're going to graph this problem here, and we're going to use it a tangent omega plus b. All right, so our our amplitude will be, of course, absolute value of two, and so our parent graph. For tangent is going to be uh, negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 comes up and to the right, down to the left. Okay, and so that's the parent graph for tangent. So now we know instead of 1 and negative 1, now we're going to be, and, and this is zero here, we're going to be at two and negative two. But our graph has shifted, so our amplitude is two, and it shifts down one. So there's no surprise there either. All right, and so now instead of this being zero, we're at negative one which means our amplitude is 2, so this goes up 1, 2, so this will be 0, positive 1, and so this will be negative 1, so we're going to go down 2, so it will be negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so we need that on there, and we need our asymptotes, so we're going to 
di the asymptotes have not changed. Those are still at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And so our curve for tangent is going to go through here. And there we go. There's our tangent curve. And so this would be negative pi OK. And so there we have it. There's our tangent graph. And so if we look at our graph here, our, and then um, see there they go, it's, they stretched it here, and then they changed it. Now here they, they moved the graph down. We changed, we kept the graph the same and changed our, um, our graph went through here at negative 1. And so this was 0, this is positive 1 here, and negative 3. So, you know, you can see it, it helps to go ahead and do it the way we did it because then it's just a little bit easier to graph it that way. All right, here we have um, 3 tangent to x. So our amplitude is going to be 3 again, and our omega is 2. But remember now, for tangent, our period is only 1 pi over omega. So that'll be our period now. It's just going to be pi over 2. Since omega is 2, it'll just be our period will be pi over 2. So if we're looking at negative pi over 2 times omega, and then here we have 0, and then positive pi over 2 times omega. So since omega is 2, that would make this negative pi over 2 times 2, and that becomes negative pi over 4. So on our graph, our left asymptote is at a negative pi over 4. And then we have 0 here. That's not going to change. Because then 0 over omega, that's still just 0. And so pi over 2 times, we said omega is 2, and we get pi over 4. And so this would be positive pi over 4. So the interval in between these two, the period, that's pi over 2. Okay. All right. And so now we can draw our tangent curve. And so here's 0 and positive 1 and negative 1. So we just draw those in there. All right. But our, since our amplitude is 3, this won't be 1 and negative 1. It'll be positive 3 and negative 3. Okay. And that's our tangent curve. And so uh, we start off with the parent graph, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and then we vertically stretch it to 3. Here's 3 and negative 3. And then we find, we, here we're horizontally compressing both sides. That's what the 2, the omega, is doing. It's horizontally compressing the graph. Uh, to the y-axis in relation to the y-axis. All right, and there's our graph, and here's our pi over to four and negative pi over four and zero, of course. Okay. Now for uh, cotangent, um, here's zero and here's pi. And so it starts up and to the left, goes through at pi over 2, and then down to the right. And 
you'll see where it does it over and over and over again. Uh, and again, we have our negative infinity to infinity, but we do not, we, our domain is interrupted at intervals of pause. Now the range, that continues on from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Now for uh, cosecant, if we see, look here, we can see that sine, here's our sine curve. We know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. See, and here's our y cosine curve, black, and that's just one cycle there. And so we know that cosecant is reciprocal of sine. Now, wherever sine hits zero, cosecant is undefined. Because on our unit circle, okay, here's our unit circle, and here's zero. So cosine, sine, cosine is 1, sine is 0. And so cosecant is the reciprocal. So we could say that this is 0 over 1 for sine. So cosecant is going to be 1 over 0. And that's why at intervals of 0 and pi, um, where sine is 0, and so here's cosine and sine, and negative 1 and 0 over 1, so cosecant is going to be 1 over 0. And so there we add pi and 0. So that's where we get anywhere where sine hits 0 on the curve. That's where we draw our asymptotes. And this would be an asymptote here too. Uh, but you don't see it because the y-axis is in the way. And then you get this flip-flop effect where the two graphs join at 1, but sine is going to go down to 0, whereas cosecant is going to go up to infinity. And then here is negative 1, the two graphs join again. So it helps to draw the sine curve first, draw the asymptotes for sine, and then draw your cosecant curves. Now if you can draw the cosecant without sign, you know, that's good, you know, all the more power to you. Okay, and so we could say here that we have negative, or cosecant is negative infinity to infinity, but we have the interruptions at intervals of pi. And so the domain would be, or the range rather, would be negative infinity to negative 1, close that negative 1, and then positive 1 to infinity. Alright, so let's take a look at uh, secant. We know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Well, here's cosine. Starts up here at 1. Oops, got that here. Cosecant, or secant rather, starts at 1 and then comes down. Here's pi over 2 and then pi and 3 pi over 2 and then back to 2 pi. So again, where cosecant hit 0, you get this asymptote. And here cosecant hit 0 again, you have that asymptote again. So you get that flip flop again effect. Where cosecant is joins with cosine at one and comes up. So if you had y equals to let's say uh, secant two secant, then this would be two and negative two and so on. And here's negative one here and it goes down that way. Okay, so let's take a look at some graphs. And here's a cosecant omega plus b and a secant omega plus b. So if we were to look at these as a parent graph, then for y equals to cosecant x, um, we get that cosecant is reciprocal of sine. So if sine, if we were to draw sine first, here's pi over 2, 
So what we do is we draw a sine first. And pi and 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. And so where this is 0 here and this is 1 and negative 1. And so wherever sine hits 0, you get that asymptote for cosecant. And so uh, sine hits 0 at pi, 0 pi and 2 pi. Alright, so now that means right here at 1, it's going to go up and then for 3 pi over 2, it joins with sine and then it goes down. So you get this flip-flop up and down for, uh, for secant. Now let's take a look at the parent graph for uh, secant. Okay, so here's y equals to secant x. Well, secant is reciprocal of cosine. So cosine is going to start here at 1, down and around. And here's pi over 2, and pi, and 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And um, there we just have the one cycle. And so now, wherever cosine hits 0, we get an asymptote for secant. And so we have an asymptote of pi over two, cosine hits zero pi over two, so there's an asymptote, and, cos and secant hits um, zero at three pi over two, and so we draw another asymptote there. And so wherever um, cosine peaks, that's where they're going to join. So here, um, Instead of drawing the whole graph like that, we're only going to draw half. Half, and then the bottom part joins with cosine at negative 1. And here's positive 1. Here's 0 here. And, and then here, at 2 pi, it peaks out at 1 again. And so instead of drawing the rest of the curve like that, you know, then that now that's beyond an interval of one period, right? Two pi. So we're not going to do that. So we're going to draw like half of one and half of the other to get that one cycle for seeking. 